All right, here we are wrapping up our NFL draft prospect profiles. Ben Lieber, Gabe Henderson, and Ben. Today we talk about the defensive back position, and there are a lot of guys that we can talk about, but we are going to talk about five guys today, and no pun intended. And <laughs> four of those five guys are six foot two and taller. Yeah. When you see these receivers that are, you know, six one, six two, and all these teams going after these, you know, big time receivers, it makes sense that we are starting to see cornerbacks that, you know, are long, linky, right? Yeah, I think that's just the evolution that we're seeing in all of sports. Like you're finding, you know, offensive linemen that can run and throw and, and do all these things um, agility wise. You're finding, you know, basketball players, these NBA guys yeah. that are like super big and muscular, but yet they can move around uh, like, a, like a defensive back. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's just the way things are going, man. You're finding guys that are bigger, faster, stronger, and the cornerback room's been touched by that. And you're finding a lot of college guys that are. They look like outside linebackers, mm -hmm. um, but they can play corner. And a guy who can play corner really good is the first man up on this list, Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech. Caleb Farley proves disruptive for the Hokies. Picked off again, this time by Farley. It's intercepted. Caleb Farley thinking six. Touchdown. Like a lot of these players out of the NFL draft this year, he opted out of the 2020 yep. season. But he can ball. Yeah, he can ball, and I think I think the reason why people like him uh, a lot is not just all the physical traits, but this huge high ceiling. You know, he was he was a high school quarterback. He he started out as a wide receiver at Virginia Tech. They moved him to cornerback. He's only played two seasons at corner, and and but he has all those those attributes that you'd look for as a wide receiver. He's got great ball skills. He attacks the football. He want, he he believes when the ball's in the air. He truly thinks that I think the wide receiver instincts kind of kick in his offensive mind kicks in and he wants to go after the ball. Um, he's he's really good in man coverage and like I said, he's he's still learning, you know. So he played 2 years at corner at a high level in the ACC, but Think about what he could become. Right. You know, gi given all those traits and all those characteristics, I think that's why everybody looks at him and has him as the as CB number one on the board. Yeah, CB number two on the board is Patrick Sur Patrick Sertan the second. Excellent tackle, Patrick Sertan. Sertan has got it for Alabama. And yeah. I mean, he's played big time football, SEC Defensive Player of the Year this past year. Coach Carl Scott, who's our safety coach, well, our DBs coach here, coached him in college. Like, yeah, it, it makes sense. It, it makes sense, man. And you know, it's it's kind of hard. You can you can replace who's CB one mm -hmm. um, back and forth. You know, it's like what do you, what do you like? Maybe maybe you just like emotionally like a guy from Alabama who's played maybe some higher competition, been mm -hmm. in some bigger games, and I and I do think that 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 carries a lot of weight. He's in, obviously, a, a pro-style head coach. Mm -hmm. um, he runs his program like the NFL does, so that's not going to surprise him. He's going against some of the best wide receivers in college football on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And he's going out there and proving it on the field. And, and I think that's why, along with the, the height and the weight and the strength, that's the other thing is he's a strong corner. He, he's not just 6'2 and 202, 205. He knows how to use that physicality. He knows how to use that strength. And so he already sort of looks like a polished, grown man right now, and he's just coming out of college. We talked about two corners. I want to talk about this safety position next. And we know Harrison Smith is on the roster. Xavier Woods, who I am ecstatic about, is mm -hmm. on the roster. Mm -hmm. But th there is some need for depth behind those two guys. And Trayvon Merrick from C TCU, he fits the mold of the modern day safety. Great play by Trayvon Merrick, the all-star safety. Picked off, one-handed by Merrick. Wow, what a pick by Trayvon Merrick. Yeah, he does, and sort of what I was saying about Nick Saban's program, mm -hmm. Gary Patterson is, is very much the same way at TCU. Um, he's a defensive-minded head coach, and you know any player that comes out of TCU that plays defensively, they're going to be smart. They're not just going to understand where they're supposed to be. They're going to understand the defense in totality. Mm -hmm. If I'm the safety, what is the defensive end doing? What's his fit in the run game? Where is this run linebacker supposed to go against this running back? Where are the corners going to fill? He's a smart player because he understands the defense. He runs the alleys well. Mm -hmm. He hits well. He, he doesn't have a, a problem playing the deep center field as well. You know, he and our Darius Washington, who, you know, I know that we're not going to talk about our Darius today, but 
He's another guy that played out of position. They had to play out of position a little bit last year at TCU because they had changed some things defensively. They had some depth issues. So they played these safeties a little bit out of whack where they normally would. Um, I'd also look out for our Darius Washington late in the rounds. He's one of these smaller, uh, smaller, more like honey badger type looking mm -hmm. guys, but has a nose for the football as well. But Merrig is, is hands down the number one safety in this draft and for mm. good reason. You, you talked about the honey badger. The next guy up on the list is Elijah Molden. That ball gets picked off by Molden. Molden's got it. The screen is intercepted. Picked off by Elijah Molden. 5'10", 190. And it's crazy we call that small, right? Yeah. But compared to yeah. these other guys. But what does he possess on film that stands out to you? Because I, I think he is an amazing player. Short area quickness. Okay. You know, that's an attribute I think you you like to see in every position. You know, you like to see, you know, pass rushers, defensive ends have that short area quickness. Three techniques have that short area quickness. You obviously you ob obviously want to see it out of your out of your slot corner. Mm -hmm. Can you move quickly in a short area where you've you've got this quick, shifty slot receiver mm -hmm. that can go either direction? Mm -hmm. And can you respond to that? And and he does that. I would say he's much more quick than fast. You know, if, there, if there's one area that maybe he can get burned on, it's just the straight vertical routes. But a lot of those, a lot of those slot position routes are not going to straight vertical. So he can handle pretty much everything. You know, you can tell that uh, through his pedigree and his father that he's smart. He, he doesn't look like there's any hesitation. He's not guessing what routes there are. He knows how to undercut routes as well. Um, so. To me, I think from a cerebral standpoint, the short area quickness, everything that you're looking for in the uh, in the slot DB. You talk about how smart he is. He's talking books right now. He was a finalist for the William V. Campbell Trophy, which is basically the Academic Heisman Award. So, I mean, the, the, the knowledge is there. But you talked about his coverage skills, and we know the nickel position. You got to be able to come up and tackle, too. Yeah. Did you see that physicality there, too? Oh, yeah, you can see the physicality. He has, okay. he has no problem sticking his hat in there. And, and I think that he probably looks smaller than his height and weight would suggest, mm -hmm. but he doesn't play that small. You know, he, he is like a little bit of a fire plug out there, and he's not afraid to go down there, get downhill and hit you. All right, last but not least, as the screen changes, the safety from Florida State, Hamza Nasruddin. And it's intercepted. Hamza Nasruddin on the interception. Nasruddin has the football. He's up to the 40. Broke a couple tackles. One man to get by for Nasruddin. And all the way to the end zone on the return. Hamza Nasruddin. Yeah, he's an interesting player to me because I look at his potential versatility. You yeah. see the height and weight. You know, 6'4", 220. Um, Probably not what you're looking for as a true center field safety. But the thing I like about him is, is again, kind of like Farley. I think he's got a really high ceiling. He tore his ACL in 2019. He only played two games this last year. So not a lot of tape from last year. But what you see is a guy that, that just flies around. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he plays like a, uh, an outside linebacker, although he can, he can rock and roll from the safety position. And that's kind of why I put him pretty high on my list because if I'm looking what the Vikings could potentially do, they love, when I say rock and roll, it means like bring down the safeties into the box, down the line of scrimmage. You don't know who's gonna be that deep safety or what coverage they're gonna be in because we've seen so many times Harrison Smith line up on the line of scrimmage like he's gonna blitz. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he's jetting back and they might be in a two deep shell or run some version of cover two, or he might be the single high safety. A guy like, like Hamza, he can be that guy too, you know? So imagine you have two safeties now that are very comfortable mm -hmm. playing the center field spot, blitzing off the edge, playing like a linebacker in the box and some rundowns. Now you don't, you really don't know who's, who's bringing the heat and what, and what coverage they're gonna be in. So from a disguise perspective and from the way that the NFL is going, you wanna substitute as less as possible and minimize the substitutions on defense because you're rolling in all these different personnel groups. I mean, all of a sudden now you're playing Kyle Pitts. Yeah. You know, what personnel grouping does he fit into? Is, he, is this 11 personnel? Mm -hmm. Is this 12 personnel? Heck, we might just classify it as 10 personnel because he, he's basically split out yep. as, as a wide receiver. With a guy like Nasrul Dean, you don't have to move anybody off the field. You know, he can be that linebacker if all of a sudden they come out with, with Kyle Pitts and he comes down into the box in a blocking situation. You're like, okay, fine, we'll just scoot him down a little bit and he can play the run game. So I'm putting more emphasis on what you can do with him mm -hmm. uh, as far as disguise packages and really never coming off the field. How does he fit in this defense? Because out of 
everybody that we've named on this list, it, it looks like he might be a guy that falls to us later in the, in the draft. Well, again, I think that you could just look at it in certain teams. You know, you would know that getting right in, in the course of the week. You know, are we going to be in more sub-package situations with this team? If that's the case, and we're only going to have two linebackers on the field, well, he essentially could become your third linebacker. Mm -hmm. And that way, if they did try to throw something at you or play a little bit of power run game with you, um, you're pretty comfortable with him down in the box, next to Kendricks, next to Barr, but also, oh, by the way, I'm going to man up that tight end if he releases. And it takes a little bit of the pressure off of the, the linebackers so they can focus more on the run game. So, uh, big safety, can cover a lot of ground, um, did not play a lot. Coming off an ACL, which ACL is obviously not a big deal anymore, especially with the training staff that they have here, um, they'll get him 100% flying around like he was two years ago. Mm. Well, we've done all the analysis. The NFL draft is up next. So all we can do now is just sit back and wait and talk about the guys that the Vikings select. So, guys, thank you again for tuning in to another edition of the NFL Draft Prospect Profile. I'm Gabe Henderson. That's Nacho Lieber. <laughs>